to a time when I actually interviewed for my first faculty job at the University of Wisconsin at Madison, and they asked me to give a seminar on the U.S. dietary goals, which had just come out at the time. And Senator uh, George McGovern had a committee that was about to go out of business, so they uh, wrote uh, a quick document called the U.S. Dietary Goals, which turned out to be a government bestseller. It sold more copies than the Pentagon Papers at the time. And they proposed a radical change in the diet, a reduction, a great reduction in the amount of fat in the diet to 30% of calories. They proposed an increase in complex carbohydrates to 48% uh, uh, of the diet. And they based this um, recommendation on the statement, which was not yet proven, that six out of the 10 leading causes of death in the US and, and the world were caused by dietary um, patterns. So, I want to fast forward now to 40 years in the future, where I'm predicting that um, we're going to have a major increase in fat consumption, we're going to have a major decrease in carb consumption, and in fact, we might eradicate or greatly reduce the incidence of chronic disease in humans, and at the same time, increase uh, human performance. So this is why we're meeting today. Uh, not looking forward and not looking backwards, looking at the here and now. The people we've gathered in this room have the scientific blueprint for achieving remarkable improvements in human health through diet. And my next task is actually to introduce one of those remarkable people. I want to introduce one of the experts who's writing the scientific blueprint. Ohio State's fortunate to have recruited top scientists in the keto world, and um, for two decades, uh, this person has advanced the keto research frontier. We all know him for his 300 plus publications and five books, but I know him as an outstanding person, a kind soul with a sincere desire to help people uh, through his work, and I give you uh, Professor Jeff Foley. Okay, well, good morning, everyone. And especially for those who traveled here out of town, uh, a warm welcome to Columbus and the Ohio State University. Uh, I'm really honored to be part of this special event that's brought together top scientists and practitioners studying and translating ketone and low carbohydrate nutrition research. I personally stumbled into this area about 20 years ago while I was studying dietetics. And I dared to, to think differently and was quickly ostracized from that profession. I, uh, I started in grad school to actually study ketogenic diets. And my first experiments uh, explored cholesterol and lipoprotein responses to a ketogenic diet in the mid-90s. The results were positive, uh, and that inspired me as a budding scientist to want to conduct further experiments. And so on and so on. For 20 consecutive years now, I've been obsessed with writing grants to fund ketogenic research. And over that time, I've amassed a massive pile of rejection letters. <laughs> well, we, we have managed to cobble together enough funds to really do some remarkable research over the last couple decades. But I, I want to point out, I've, I've pursued this line of research on ketogenic diets, not because I'm on some crusade to prove that they're uh, beneficial. It's because the data have been remarkably positive and inspired me to want to do follow-on studies. So it would have been hard to predict at the beginning of my career, I'd be standing here today brushing shoulders with this high caliber group of scientists and empiricists discussing the breadth of provocative research on low-carbohydrate diets. Uh, honestly, it's a little surreal. Over the next two days, you're going to hear a lot of great talks. It's going to be a proverbial fire hose in the face of cutting-edge research. Over the next two years, I predict additional major breakthroughs by many of the people uh, you'll be hearing from today, as well as people in the room uh, on this topic. And with so much innovative work in the pipeline, uh, expect OSU to host future events, premier events that really spotlight this cutting edge research. 
So the overarching goal of this meeting is simply to shine much deserving light on this emerging area of low carbohydrate and ketogenic research. Uh, it's, it's certainly been living in the shadows for too long. Through disseminating this information at the conference and through video recordings afterward, which will be available free, uh, the aim of this meeting is really to cultivate new collaborations, inspire both young and seasoned investigators to pursue this line of work, and facilitate the process of translating uh, the impact of, of, of this on practice and policy as well to benefit the health of people all over the world. So at this time, I want to acknowledge the planning committee, uh, a, a motley crew of, of brilliant thought leaders. First, my dear friend and colleague, co-author, business partner, and personal sommelier, Steve Finney. Uh, what can I say? Uh, Steve is the undisputed guru of ketogenic diets. He coined the terms nutritional ketosis and keto adaptation in the mid 80s, thereby destroying a promising academic career. <laughs> Steve is a virtual encyclopedia of knowledge. Uh, for those of you under the age of 30, en encyclopedias were <laughs> printed books of all known knowledge. But equally impressive, Steve is very humble and extremely generous. Uh, if you dare to ask Steve a question, uh, you better have a couple hours to hear the short version of an answer. Next is Ken Ford. Uh, I'm incredibly fortunate to call Ken a friend and colleague. He's truly a remarkable mind advancing uh, all sorts of areas related to technology, including ketogenic diets uh, for enhancing human, perform human performance and resilience. And this is largely through his very impressive uh, Institute for uh, Human and Machine Cognition, IHMC. And through IHMC, uh, over the last several years, Ken has amassed arguably what I would describe as the, the best collection of presentations and podcasts from real thought leaders uh, in nutrition. Ken Lee, who you just heard from, is another uh, close friend and colleague at OSU who's really inspired a major focus on food for health across campus and beyond through his expert leadership as director of the Food Innovation Center. Without his support, this event would not have happened. Ken, I love your sense of humor uh, and the fact that you did not kick me to the curb when uh, I, you first heard me talk and interview here. Finally, uh, I want to again acknowledge our event coordinator extraordinaire, Julie Manning. Uh, for the past year, approximately, the planning committee talked once a month on the phone and we had a lot of fun. But it was really Julie uh, working in the background uh, who did all the heavy lifting dealt with all the details of this event. So please uh, uh, thank Julie at some point over the next two days for what was truly a heroic effort in making this event possible. So at this time, uh, I have the distinct honor and pleasure to introduce one of the newest and most impressive Buckeyes. Senior Vice President for Research at Ohio State, Morley Stone. Morley literally started this position two weeks ago. I met Morley prior to coming to OSU at a Blue Sky meeting hosted by Ken Ford uh, in Jackson Hole back in 2012. Uh, the meeting was about ketones and human performance. At that time, I was at the University of Connecticut. Uh, Morley was chief scientist at the 7th 11th Human Performance Wing at Air Force Research Labs. All total, Morley has served 26 years as a civilian scientist, including uh, being a DARPA program manager for several years. Most recently, he was chief technology officer at AFRL, where he provided leadership and technical direction for thousands of government employees and contractors across multiple states and internationally. 
He spearheaded technical uh, vision for delivering optimized human performance for air, space, and cyberspace through human effectiveness research, human system integration, aerospace medicine education, aerospace systems consultation, and operational support. Morley assisted in the planning and execution of an annual $2.3 billion uh, Air Force Science and Technology Program and an additional $2.5 billion in external funded research and development. His interest has spanned broad areas such as the interface of material sciences, biotechnology, human performance, and autonomous systems. It is an understatement to say that Morley has been at the forefront of keeping uh, and ensuring our superiority of our Air Force. It may be serendipity or divine intervention. Uh, whatever the reason, I'm beyond thrilled that you're at OSU, Morley. Uh, this is a big win for OSU. Uh, I can't Im imagine how overwhelming you are taking on this position the last couple weeks, and yet you still found time to be with us this morning. Uh, so a sincere thank you for, for giving us your valuable time. Please, everyone, welcome Dr. Morley Stone. Well, I tell you, it, it, to say it's a pleasure to be here is an understatement. And, and yes, it's two weeks on the job, but there was nothing that was going to keep me away from, from this meeting here today. I can guarantee you that. So on behalf of President Drake and Provost McFerrin here at Ohio State and the rest of the leadership team, it's my pleasure to welcome you to campus. Uh, it's an exciting time here on campus. We're getting ready to welcome 66,000 students back on the campus. Uh, you might have noticed some of the chaos over the past few days, but it, it's a great time here. And I think in, in front of this assemblage, I'll, I'll make a commitment to you publicly. And that commitment, certainly on part of Jeff and Ken and the Julie, is my commitment to make sure that this topic of human enhancement, especially through nutritional means, continues to be a high priority item here at this university. I stood right here on this stage literally yesterday and was kicking off a meeting devoted to gallium oxide. You may think, what in the world does gallium oxide have to do with this? Well, first of all, it demonstrates the incredible breadth of work that occurs at this institution across all 15 colleges here. But it has a similarity with this topic of human performance, especially human performance through nutrition. One of the things that I share with numerous colleagues in this room, especially coming off of 26 years with the Defense Department, is that if you look at pervasive things that make a difference every day in the lives of our warfighters, it's things like materials, because without materials, their things don't work, and things like nutrition and their performance. I had the pleasure of, of serving with Dr. Ford here on the Defense Science Board. I guess that was back in 2012. And one of the things we had the pleasure of doing is, I think for the first time, really advancing this topic of human nutrition and performance uh, in a formal document like the Defense Science Board. And if you're not familiar, uh, the Defense Science Board is that scientific advisory board that directly advises the Secretary of Defense and the leadership within the Pentagon. And so what we were seeing since that time period is this, this generation, if you will, of momentum uh, behind this topic. And I'm just so delighted to be here at an institution where we can continue to drive this, this forward. In this particular topic of carbohydrate restriction in, in the ketogenic lifestyle, I really first was exposed to this now about 15 years ago or so. As Jeff mentioned in my bio, I was a, about 15 years ago, I was a program manager in the Defense Science Office of DARPA. And a colleague, literally two offices down the hall, was Joe Belitsky. And I don't know, does anybody, we, Ken, was, Ken was doing polls here today, so I'll do a poll. How many people know Joe Belitsky? All right, these two, we got one more. Well, Joe's a nut. If you don't know, Joe is a wild man. And he was running a program called Peak Soldier Performance. And Joe was running around through peak soldier performance, not only championing different nutritional approaches like flavonoids and the difference that they can make, but he was funding a group to actually look at the creation of things like ketone esters. And I think we'll hear about ketone esters more during the next two days. But it was really Joe's pioneering work and the vision, and, and I was fundamentally trained as a biochemist. I was just fascinated by what he was doing in that program, and I've been bitten by the bug uh, ever since. And again, just. Uh, an honor to be here and be a part of this. I think given the, the poll of people that Ken to, uh, took in the beginning, 
This is probably the largest gathering of thought leaders within this area, certainly in recent memory, maybe ever. And so just congratulations again to the organizers for putting this together and get all, getting all this brain power in one room. So again, have a great two days. I am just uh, passionate about this topic, and I look forward to circling back with Jeff, Ken, and Julie and finding out the way forward as we uh, unpack this exciting area. Thank you.